Uh, speaking of a path that no one knows, kind of felt like last year uh, Ben Johnson didn't really know what he wanted, whether he wanted to become a head coach somewhere else or stay in Detroit, be the offensive coordinator. He ended up staying or electing to stay in Detroit. We've heard multiple reports after the fact, um, most that I kind of took issue with, only because it feels like when a team doesn't get their number one guy, LeVar, then it starts being like, well, he wasn't our number one guy. No, we, we turned him down, right? No, 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 no. It, it, like the boyfriend-girlfriend scenario. It, you know, it, it was them. You know, they, like I broke up with them. It wasn't the other way around. Mm-hmm. You typically get those sorts of conversations. Well, Ben Johnson is able to provide a little bit more clarity on the subject. Let's, uh, let's take a listen. Something that, that really resonates with me is, okay, eight openings this past year. What would you set the over-under in three years? How many still have jobs? Shoot, yeah, I'd, I'd put the over under at four and a half. I would say there's a good chance five of them are out of jobs in three years. And so Dang. when I look at it from that perspective, if I get the opportunity to go down that road, it's, it's about how do I get to that second contract? How do I set myself up that it, the stars need to align? I'm not, I'm not going to do it just to do it. I love what I'm doing right now. Love it. Love, I love where I'm at. My family loves where we're at. Um, love the people that we're doing it with. And so I'm not willing to go down the other path yet unless I feel really good about how it's going to unfold. Mm. That's Ben Johnson, the current offensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions. And, and look, he's been a big reason, in, in my opinion, why Jared Goff has had success, that the Lions have had success offensively. Uh, he's been up for head coaching jobs, you know, year after year since he's taken over there in Detroit. His creativity, his ability to find ways of getting the playmakers the ball, uh, it, all of that has, has been on display. And I listened to his words, kind of read the report, some of his quotes, and I, I, don't, I don't find anything wrong with that. Like, the guy's very pragmatic in his approach. I think he's looking at it with a very realistic perspective. And I think he understands his value, too, where he's going to get other shots and opportunities – uh, if he's as good as he thinks he is, and I, and I think he is. I think he's proven that. So I'm not sure why more coaches don't take that opportunity. And maybe it's because they're in a, a spot or a situation that they don't feel as good about. Where you look at what Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions organization now has built up, guys like Chris Spielman who are a part of it, and, and the Ford family and the way they've transitioned now with this group – Maybe it's important because he does feel so comfortable there and confident there as opposed to sometimes other you know assistant coaches or coordinators are like, man, this thing might not be the same next year. You know, We yeah. could have a terrible season. They might can all of us. How much do you, do you think has to do with that? It's very – that's very true and it's very realistic. And, I mean, today's NFL, they hire and fire pretty quickly. You know, the turnover can be very, very quick. You've seen guys get just one year. Like, they haven't even gotten a full entire season sometimes um, before judgment is, is being dropped on them. I, listen, I, I think that it's it's by person. It's it's by mentality. It's by goals. It's by um, a lot of different variables, I would say, in how you go about approaching what you want your trajectory to be, what you want your accomplishment to be. Uh, and where you ultimately want to to end up. Listen, you're you're mentioning the Detroit Lions. That was not a a favorable situation for a coach to walk into. You know, as much like what's going on in Carolina right now, you're trying to figure out which way is up as an organization with with that that team. That's a lot like how it was in Detroit until Dan Campbell got there and whatever it is that took place, the culture shift that, that took place, the the people that, that Dan Campbell and, and company were a part of hiring to create what they've created, it's taken time to build that. When you look at something being built a certain type of way, and if I'm Ben Johnson and I've seen things and, and unfold the way they're unfolding in Detroit, I sit there and I ask myself a simple question. If I go to to a certain a certain franchise, do I get that amount of time? Do I get the the fair opportunity? Are they going to let me hire who I need to hire? Am I going to have the like I said? Am I going to be able to get the hires and have the amount of time to bring in the type of players, develop the culture? Because ultimately, 
That's generally the only way you're going to change a failing organization. And generally speaking, the only way you're going to get a head coaching job is if it was a failing team. So there's just so many different variables that are a part of it. Some coaches are like, look, I'm going to take my chance. I don't get a chance all the time. So if a head coaching job comes available and I can get it, then I'm going to get it. And I don't care if that means I'm going to lose or whatever. I'm taking that gig. Some look at it as I don't all good get all coaching jobs aren't aren't created equal and all of them aren't the best to step into. So I just think that it's a matter of where that coach, you know, what their frame of thought, you know, what it is and what what leads them to and what motivates them to do what it is that they do and where they're ultimately trying to get. You know, you reacted off of him basically saying, what, in three or four years, you know, half these guys will be fired. Yeah. <laughs> you had a reaction off that. Why, why the reaction? I mean, I mean, because he's right. Yeah. He's right. I mean, it's it's, it's just to me. Just because he said it? Is that more of it? No, no. I, he I said think, what, like, a lot of people think. I think he's saying what people. Yes, that's what it is. I think it's what people are thinking. It's what you're you're realizing. I mean, is he wrong? You know what's crazy? Let me let me tell you this. I was just I was just on a visit to UCLA this weekend with with man. And what up, man, man? What up, man, man? And 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 I I this is the first time I ever met Eric Bieniemy. First time I ever met him. And I was kind of apprehensive about even just kind of talking to him because I just know the conversations I've had to to have about him on air with the same type of of conversation points and what's taking place dude is one of the most impressive dudes you'll be around very charismatic understands the game breaks it down very very easily where it's easily uh consumed just just was i was i was expecting one thing when 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 i saw him and it turned out to be something totally different and you just never know what the real story is on something. You just know what the narrative becomes, and and you don't necessarily know why the narrative becomes the narrative, but it does. And and I just think that in coaching, man, it it's such a it's such a it's a unique situation. It's a unique profession, especially in the NFL. And if you don't play your cards right, you could find yourself in a, a position where you're never you're never in play to get that gig. And, and I think for Ben Johnson to be looking at what he's doing, the way he's looking at it, like I'm good where I'm at. I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. I'm gonna keep building here. And as my resume grows and my you know my accomplishments grow, if the right situation presents itself for me or this situation begins to deteriorate in some way, then I'll make a decision there. But if you're not in a, a, a situation where you have to make a bold decision where you know this is a, a, a losing situation, but you're taking it anyway, if you're not really in a situation where you got to make that, that call cue, why would you do it? Right. Why do it? No, it, 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 it's obviously going to impact your legacy. It's going to impact your impression. Most, most coaches only get one shot. There's not many that get two. And so you better feel good about taking on that head coaching job as you go into it. And um, I'm trying to think of – hold on, let me look this up. Um, the Michigan's men basketball coach who, who came from uh, FAU most recently. Um, hmm. His name is escaped me at the moment, but is it Dusty May? Is that – yeah, Dusty hmm. May. So he was at FAU, and he talked about taking that job, and he, and he took that job really without – hadn't seen the facilities, hadn't seen and anything else that was down in the Boca Raton area, that particular campus. And he literally broke down after soon signing and taking on this deal because he had taken over this program, not really knowing all the facts and not realizing how much of an uphill battle it was going to be coming from the program he just came from. I think he was previously like Akron or something like that, and they were, they were doing well. He was an assistant at the time. And so he essentially took the job because it was a head coaching job and everything else. But there was mo there were moments of doubt, and and I, you know, and it's a different you know spot now because he he built up the program, he had the incredible run to the Final Four for FAU that ultimately had led to his hiring now at Michigan as their head uh, men's basketball coach. But the point is, is that actually reading that article 
about him breaking down. I, I felt bad for him. I mean, it, it's his own fault for not doing his due diligence, but that's the position some of these head coaches are in or some of these head coaching prospects are in. Mm-hmm. They don't know when that next big opportunity is going to come. And I think everyone looks at it with an optimistic perspective saying, well, of course I'm going to go there and win. Like people who question play calling, do you think the guy called the play because it wasn't going to work? <laughs> like clearly they saw something that they're like, no, it's going to work. Like we see this in business where you know companies make decisions and they're like, no, this is going to work. This is the fad. This is the trend. Of course this is going to work. And we do it in our own personal lives, right? Like we make decisions all the time about stuff. We're like, no, this is why I'm doing this. It's going to work. And then when it, when it doesn't, it's like, okay, like, but there, in, this, in this instance, there, there has to be helpless, you know, walk into a scenario realizing like, oh, this is not what I thought it is. And now I'm stuck in a three, four-year contract. Yes, you're being compensated well, but this might be the only shot I ever get. And, and this is it, like having to deal with all this. So you better be picky about it when it comes to what opportunities you choose to take. And especially for Ben Johnson, a guy who I think – I think he'll be a great head coach whenever that moment comes. I just think he's looking for the right moment, the right ownership, the right structure to everything that he's looking for. And clearly that wasn't the case, at least not that was offered to him last offseason.